Hello and welcome to the Blind Anglers Workshop. Today I want to show you a couple of rigs um, suitable for beginners and um, pretty much the two most popular rigs in, in sea fishing and you can use these from the rocks, beaches, uh, from boats etc. I'm just going to show you how I do it um, and if I can do it then anybody can do it. Now the first rig that I want to show you is the very popular, very um, good running leisure. So I've got some line here and this line here we'll just pretend is our main line so um, basically you've got your rod together you put the reel on it and threaded the line up through the eyes and uh, this is our main line and on it what we do is we just get a weight and thread them on. Very simple. Then we get ourselves a bead and thread that one on as well. just like that. Now I don't know if you noticed there uh, but that took me a couple of attempts to get the line through the uh, the hole in the bead. Now being visually impaired obviously I can't I can't see the hole myself so it's all about finding it by stabbing the the mono the line into the bead until until it goes through. Now if you're new to fishing or uh, visually impaired and um, and you suffer with this and you're using braid then you want to be tying a leader to your braid because braid is more like it feels like cotton so when you're you're, you're trying to stab it instead of it bouncing back um, into like a, a nice straight piece of, of mono um, it kind of folds over like uh, like cotton does so um, yeah if you're using braid you want to really get a leader on it okay so we've got the, we threaded on the weight we threaded it on a bead next is a swivel and you just put the line through the eye of the swivel and you tie it on. Now the line, the uh, the knot that I like to use is you pull the, the line through, get a nice tag end, put your index finger in between the two lines and kind of hold the line tight so it doesn't slide about and you want to twist the tag end around the main line um, around about five to six times. One, two, three, four, Five. We'll just do five, and then what we do is we take the tag end, pass it through the loop that the index finger is making, and pull it tight. Now, before you pull it tight, what you really want to be doing is adding a bit of spit, a bit of saliva to it to cool the knot down when it forms. Um, I haven't done this just because this is just f f for show. But if I was if I was fishing, um, or if this was a rig that I was going to make up and put in the rig wallet, then for sure I I would. Um, and then we get some snips and just clean up the knot by just taking away the tag end like so. Uh, the reason what you want to do is make sure your tag end snipped right down low so it doesn't catch on any any weed when you're when you're fishing because it will bunch around the knot. So so far what we've done is we've put on a weight which is running free, a bead which is running free and we've tied on the swivel and and the bead is basically to stop a the weight going down over the swivel because sometimes some weights will have quite a big gape and you can buy very very small swivels and also it stops the weight from banging against the knot this bead protects the knot as well. So that's that part next what we need to do is think about our trace and what I like to use is amnesia and uh, let me just grab some here. And this come, this stuff is I I, I do like amnesia. And there it is. Um, I do like this stuff. And uh, it comes in uh, different colours and um, obviously different strengths as well. So again, you just get the the whatever you're going to use for your trace. Thread through the other side of the swivel. So you've got your main line tied to one side, your threads went through the other eye, and again the same knot again. So pull the tag end through and around to four, six, six times round, tie again back through the loop, pull it tight. You might need a bit of the older D5 
on that one. And again, I haven't um, put any spit or anything on it because, uh, again, it's just for just for show. And we just nip off that that tag. Okay. Then the length of the trace really all depends on what what you fancy, what and what you're 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 going for. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll just cut a little bit off here. And then we can look at tying on, <coughs> excuse me, tying on a hook. So the length of trace and the size of the hook really depends on what you're you're fishing for. Um, you know, if you're going after fish like black bream and so on, then you want to be looking at a smaller hook. And if you're going for cod and bass and so on, then you you want to get a nice size hook. Uh, the hook I've got here, I believe, is uh, is a frio. And what you do is, again, just thread the hook onto the trace. And again, very simply, just do the knot. Take your time with it, because it is a hook. It will obviously go into you, and um, you need to make sure that you're protecting yourself at all times here. Now, when I tie my hooks on, I like to grab this, this tag line here, this tag end, with my teeth to pull it through. So if I'm doing that, I always put my fun in the gape of the hook and put it down so it's away from my face as I as I do that. And there we go. That one's that one's tied on. Now, whereas all the other knots you could have taken this tag off uh, with a pair of scissors, um, which I which I do do, when it comes to the the hook. Always use a pair of snips because of the way the jaws are. You can get the line in the jaws, thread the hook right up, or sorry, slide the hook right up to the jaws and nip it off. And uh, the reason I do that is you want to get that tag end basically gone completely. So when you feel it, you don't feel any sharp, sharp edges. Um, and the reason for this is. If you if you if you're fishing with a um, with a worm or a sand deal, yeah, maybe even a small sand deal, um, and you want to thread the worm up the trace up the snood, if you've got a piece of mono sticking out here that's very sharp, it will rip your worm, especially lug worm, which are soft anyway. It will just rip them and d destroy your bait. So as long as that's nipped right in, nice and close, and you've done the knot up nice and tight, and you can thread the worms up your snood and have a nice big big bait. So that is basically a nice, very easy running leisure. So you can cast out, your weight will sit there, and when people pick, uh, sorry, when people, when the fish pick up the bait, they can run with it. And um, it's absolutely brilliant rig. I use it myself, but especially on like steep shingly uh, beaches. Um, I like to fish this close in um, for bass, or um, I like to put little split shots on the trace. Put like a have a nice little small hook for some with some ragworm uh, for say uh, flounder and dabs and so on. But that is how you do a running ledger. Very quick, very easy, and um, one of the most popular rigs there is. Okay, so the next rig that I want to show you is the very popular pulley panel rig. And uh, I like to start this off by getting myself a weight clip and some shock leader, and tying on the weight clip. Now again, same knot as before, but I always give myself a little bit more tag end, if you will, because the knot is going to be slightly bigger um, due to the, the thickness of the line. So again, six twists round, back through where the index finger is holding up, give it a pull, form the knot, and then add some saliva to cool the knot down when you, when you pull it when you put it tight. Okay. Then we just want to get some snips, some scissors, trim off the tag end, like so. And then you want to decide the length of the, the rig that you want to make. Now with a poly panel rig you can make them um, long or, or short. And I, I like to have 
one of each, uh, well, a couple of each actually, to be fair. Um, a few long ones and a few short ones. And um, they, sometimes it can affect the way uh, the fish takes. And um, if, if one's not working, then you may find the, the longer or the shorter one may outfish each other. And then the next thing you want to do is get some rubber tubing. And uh, I've got a tiny bit here, but I think it's just too long. For the impact shield, so I'm just going to trim that down slightly, like so. So we got some rubber tube in there, and we want to thread that on. So we'll just get the end of the shock leader and send them all the way down. Next, we want to get ourselves an impact shield. Now the rubber tube and the impact shield, when you when you purchase them, you know, come as one. Now with the impact shield. The way I would describe this is it's like an umbrella. You've got the uh, the handle end, then it goes up to the umbrella, and then you've got the, the pointy bit that comes out the top. And if you feel the bit that comes out of the top, you feel, you'll feel like a little, little ridge there, which will hold the rubber tubing in place. But when you put this on the shock leader, you want to put it on... So the point goes down first. There's a little slit in the umbrella body, and there's also one in the, say, the umbrella handle. And you just thread that through one, and make sure it passes through the other one as well. And uh, if you're new to fishing and you're making this rig, just take your time with it, and you'll you'll feel your way. But uh, yeah, if you imagine it's an upside down umbrella, and um, and thread it down like so. Next, what we need to do is we need to get a rig bead, which are tiny little beads and uh, any tackle, tackle ship dealer will know exactly what you're doing and what you need if you tell them you're making a putty panel rig and you need a, a small bead. Let me just grab one there, there we go. And, uh, and you thread that one on as well. And again, like the previous rig, take your time with it. They are small, fiddly little things, but this shock lead is so thick it will hold its shape and you can just stab it at the bead until you find the uh, the opening to, to thread it down onto the shock leader, like so. Next what we want to do is get ourselves a crimp. Which is a piece of metal tubing basically and this will act as a stopper for the bead which I'll show you in a minute but uh, again just hold it in your fingers and uh, thread the line all the way through and down to the bottom of the rig body like so. Next what I like to do here is add another little bead and uh, the reason for that is we're going to add a swivel. So I've got another little micro bead here which I'm going to stab on a few, stab a few times till we find where it needs to go. There it is. There it goes. Right, so like so. Now the reason I've put that little bead on is because some swivels. Are, that I like to use for the main line have quite a big gape and they can go over this micro bead so I use a bigger bead so we, I'm about to thread on a normal size bead but sometimes the normal size beads will have a big enough gape that the crimp will go inside it so either you'll find the little bead will go inside the, the size of the swivel or um, the bigger bead will go in, have the, uh, the crimp inside of, of that. So and I, and I do like to have a bigger swivel to, to my main line if I'm honest with you, which is why I do it this way. You could, you know, have a small swivel and, and, and you wouldn't need to do that. But um, this is just what I like. I like to do. So let me just grab a... <coughs> okay, and we just thread the, the swivel on. All the way down. 
just like we have done the beads and the crimps and the impact shield. No tying on, it's just threaded straight down. So everything at the moment is threaded on apart from the weight clip. Next we go for another bead, normal size. And uh, just stab him a few times till he goes on. There he goes. Perfect. Then we want to go for a swivel. And this one is tied on. So we're just tying the swivel on, same as we did the weight clip before. Put that out with the tag end. And we go around six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pass the tag back through where the index finger is. Grab it with the teeth, give it a little pull. Don't forget to uh, add a bit of saliva to cool the knot down as it, as it forms. Just make sure that you can fill it around with it with the fingers in your tag end, pulling it nice and tight. There it goes. Perfect. And then again, just snip that that tag end off. Right. So so far, we have tied on the swivel and the weight clip, but everything else in between is threaded on. Here comes the fun part. What we want to do is get this rubber tube in onto this bit of the impact shield, the the, uh, the stake, the, the bit that would come out the top of the umbrella. And it's just a case of just pushing the rubber part against the impact shield and just fiddling around with it until you get it all the way over like that. Now once you've got it where it needs to sit, grab hold of the shock leader and just twist it around, pinch the rubber tube in just so it runs freely in a straight line down the body of the impact shield so it can rise up and it's not going to cause anything that's going to stop it because that's the, the aim of it is it will rise up to release your hooks. Right, next we get a pair of pliers. What I like to have is a is a multi-tool tool in my tackle box. Take it with me all the time. Um, you never know when you might need it. And what you do, it's going to go all the way to the other end here, <laughs> is find the uh, the crimp, that metal tubing, and just hold it gently in the jaws of the pliers, and then just feed the shock leader all the way down until you get down the bottom to where the impact shield is. And then what you want to do is you want to judge it, you want to give it a couple of centimetres, maybe a, uh, yeah, say, say two centimetres above where the impact shield is sitting and give it a, a squeeze. And you just want to squash it onto the shock leader. You don't want to push, squeeze too hard on the pliers because you don't want the metal to go into the actual um, shock leader and damage the shock leader. It's just a little squash to hold position, like so. And that's basically the rig part made. Now we need to get onto the the trace part, uh, the panel, the panel part. So we uh, get some shock leader. Uh, sorry, get some amnesia. And uh, again, the the strength of your amnesia all depends on. What, what you're fishing for. And what you do is you go to the swivel that's tied on at the other end. So where it's tied on you've got the shock leader and rig body one side and you want to tie your trace on the other side. So you just again thread the, thread the amnesia through the eye of the um, swivel and do the same knot again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Back through where the index finger was. bit of uh, saliva and pull through like so 
Let me find the snips. Trim him off. Like that. I might actually just trim that side down as well. Right. So once you've tied on the first part of the uh, of the trace, what you want to do is you want to come and find the the swivel that's running free because this is the one that'll be running to your main line and just hold it and pull the swivel all the way to the top to where the other swivel is where you've just tied on the uh, the trace and then with with one hand hold the trace line and the rig body and just feed it all the way down and you kind of want to find where the impact shield is hold the trace and you want to snip it about halfway down the impact shield because you don't want it to be you, you would rather be too short than too long because if it's too long it's going to be um, too slack for the impact shield to work um, so you'd rather go bang on or uh, or a little bit too short so the impact shield can hold the hooks under tension for when you're uh, for when you're casting out now let's get a couple of hooks we'll have that one and have one of these come here okay now got two hooks here one's a 3 one's a 2 I always like to have my top hook slightly smaller than the uh, than the bottom hook and the the top hook is actually built for this very thing I don't know if you can if the camera pick that up there but it's actually got a bent eye if you will it, it, it bends up so you thread the line down towards the hook and what that will happen is when you twist the the um, the hook around your bait it will sit flush to the to the line and uh, flush to your bait for a better presentation so the top top hook is basically just threaded on and then the bottom hook is tied on again same knot this time just take your time with it because you've, it's not just one hook point you've got to worry about it's two so one two three four five six times round oops he's come undone there let's try that again one two three four five six pass it through where your index finger is grab it with the teeth but with this one thumb again inside the gape of the hook up to the mouth keeping the front away from your face a little bit of saliva. Obviously, co common sense and just just be careful with what you're doing. Take your time if you're new or if you're visually impaired for sure. But you can do it. And uh, just take it easy. Right, snips. So again, snips. Feed the trace of the tag end into the jaws of the snippers and push it right up against the knot and the hook and snip it so there's no sharp edges here. So you can just thread a nice worm, nice juicy worm, right up. And then obviously you've got the other hook running free. So that when you bait up, you can then take this one, you bait up, bring the top hook down to where the bait is, and you wrap it around one, two, three times, give it a little pull, and you can see how that sits nice and flush, ready to, uh, to catch you a fish. And that is a very popular, especially over here in the UK, poly panel rig. And that one will go straight straight away into the uh, rig wallet, ready for the next fishing trip. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you next time on the Blind Angler.